Today I want to talk about the principal stresses in plane stress scenarios. Imagine that uh, you have a Cartesian stress state for a point given in a coordinate system that you've established. Uh, those, the Cartesian stress state would be established by the six numbers, a sigma x, a sigma y, a sigma z, which are normal stresses, a tall xy, a tall yz, and a tall zx, which are tangential shear stresses. So think of these numbers as known. They are the stresses that, that act on the faces of a stress element for that point. So the principal stresses for that point are the roots to this cubic that is a, a given in sigma. So the, the, the stress state, the six numbers of the stress state establish the coefficients for this cubic. This is equation 315. In general, you would have three roots, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, for that cubic. And by convention, we order them so that sigma 3 is the least, sigma 2 is in the middle, and sigma 1 is the greatest. A plane stress scenario is established when one of the faces of the stress element is stress-free, without stress. Let's say, for example, it's the Z face. So then your sigma Z, your tall YZ, and your tall ZX would be zero. Then you have in that cubic lots of simplifications where those items all go to zero, causing lots of terms to go to zero. In fact, the coefficient of the constant term in the cubic actually goes to zero. And this is true no matter what face it is, had we chosen the y or the x face, um, still that constant term would go to zero. After you simplify it, you end up with this as the result. Obviously, sigma equals zero is one answer to this cubic since the constant term has vanished. So let's accept the sigma uh, equals zero as one solution and divide this uh, simplified cubic by sigma to get the well-known quadratic result. Now think about your Algebra 2 in 10th grade where you solved an equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So we know what that the solution to that kind of equation would be. In this case a is 1, b is minus sigma x plus sigma y and c is sigma x sigma y minus tau xy squared. So let's get the other two roots by using our known well-known um, solution to that quadratic. I'm going to temporarily call the root sigma a sigma b. Okay, so I'm going to let sigma a take the minus solution and sigma b take the positive solution. Now since I have a equals 1 anyway, it simplifies a little bit more. Then I can stick in um, those original values I had for b and c. And I can put the 2 that I had outside the radical, I can stick that inside the radical after I square it. Now do some expanding here of that upper part. I'll end up with a plus 2xy that's going to combine a little bit with this minus 4xy. And I'm going to end up with the solution that is um, starting to look familiar, where I have put the 4 um, inside the x minus, uh, sigma x minus sigma y, that all being squared. I'll put the 4 in here as a 2 that's going to be squared. And then the, you end up with the plus tau xy squared as well. Okay? Then we could write it in a more common way where you have sigma b comma sigma a with the understanding that b is going to take the positive 
uh, of the radical, and A is going to take the negative of the radical. This is like equation 313 uh, with a caveat, um, because we don't we can't say that this is sigma 1, 2, because remember, we have that sigma equals 0 as one principal stress, and sigma A and B, or B A, are as the other two. We actually need numerical values for B, sigma B, sigma A, in order to organize the three stresses into the sigma 1, 2, 3 format. We know that sigma A is less than sigma B because we're letting B take the positive of the radical. So we know that sigma A is less than sigma B. But where does the zero, the third um, uh, principal stress, fit in? Remember, you have sigma 3 is the least, sigma 2 is in the middle, and sigma 1 is the greatest. So if sigma B and sigma A are both positive, then you know that sigma 3 is going to be the 0, and sigma 2 is going to be the A, and sigma 1 is going to be the B. That's case 1. Case 2. If sigma B and sigma A differ in sign, that puts sigma 2 as the 0, put sigma 3 uh, as, as the negative, what would be the negative uh, value of sigma A, and that puts sigma 1 as, as sigma B, the greater uh, of the three. And that's case 2. Case 3 is when sigma a, B and A are both negative. That means that zero, the zero value is the greater of the three, so it ends up being max. Sigma B is in the middle, and sigma A is the least, and it establishes sigma 3, and that's case 3. And that's how uh, the plain stress scenario plays out. 